I have been making my way through the history of all the Robins. So far we have covered the full story of Dick Grayson, the original Boy Wonder, and Jason Todd, the second Robin and eventual Red Hood. Now we come to Robin number 3, Tim Drake. Considered by many to be the very best Robin of all time. But what exactly makes him so good? Let's get into it. get into it guys, I want to give a shout out to a channel that we are currently working on with a couple of our close friends. They set up a pro wrestling sports entertainment channel called Attitude Wrestling and asked us to help out with the presenting as we are of course very experienced in this area. We were honoured to take on this role as wrestling is something that we have loved all our lives and I'm aware that there may not be much of a crossover between Batman fans and wrestling fans but if you are into it I wanted to give it a shout out nonetheless. Again, Attitude Wrestling specifically specializing in the attitude era you can go and check that out if you're interested i would love it if you guys would support it maybe go and leave a comment on one of the videos saying that the bat cave sent you it would mean a lot and they are very talented people behind the scenes of that channel it would be great if you would support it thank you so much guys let's get on to the video tim drake was only a young boy when he attended the circus with his parents his father jack introduced him to the main act before the show the flying graysons he had a picture with the Grayson family, which would be the first time that Tim met Dick Grayson. Dick really took to Tim and even promised to dedicate the upcoming performance to him. Tim was fascinated with the performance, but it was also the very same show that would see the death of John and Mary Grayson, Dick's parents. Then years later, when Tim was about nine years old, he seen some footage of Batman and Robin apprehending the Penguin. In this footage, Robin performed a quadruple somersault. This was a manoeuvre that could only be performed by the Flying Graysons. After then discovering that Dick Grayson had gone on to be adopted by Bruce Wayne, Tim immediately made the connection that Dick was Robin, meaning that Bruce Wayne must be Batman. He then became obsessed with the dynamic duo, attempting to follow their every move. He studied them through Dick's transition to Nightwing and Jason Todd becoming the second Robin, then of course dying. Tim noticed a rather drastic change in Batman's behaviour, concluding that Batman definitely needed a Robin in order to maintain his sanity. Before long, Tim confronted Nightwing and told him about his concerns, expressing that Batman needs a Robin. However, Dick just intended to help Bruce as Nightwing, not reverting back to his previous mantle. Soon after this talk, Bruce and Dick were captured by Two-Face. Discovering that his idols were in great danger, a 13-year-old Tim Drake put on a Robin costume and with the help of Alfred, rescued the dynamic duo. Then, although very reluctant at first, Batman agreed to accept him as the new Robin on a trial basis, after a great case was made by both Dick and Alfred. He was put through months of training before he was allowed to put on the costume for a second time. First he was trained by Alfred, then by Bruce, and finally by Dick for the specific Robin training. Although, just before his training was over, Tim's parents were captured and poisoned. His mother died and his father was left in a coma. At this point, Batman was reconsidering Tim for the role of Robin, as he feared he may now be using anger and revenge as his motivation, just as Jason Todd had done before him. But Tim was different. He was driven now more than ever to do what was right. So shortly after, Bruce bestowed upon him the mantle of Robin and a brand new costume. Before Batman would allow him to join in on any real crime fighting, he had to go on an overseas training tour. He would learn from many great martial arts masters, including Lady Shiva. Tim was different to the previous Robins. He was far more reserved than Jason and far more of a detective than Dick, which is saying something because Dick is quite the detective himself. He also didn't take to martial arts as fast as the others. Dick obviously spending his life as an acrobat helped him pick up martial arts as if it was second nature and Jason growing up on the streets of Gotham had no choice but to learn how to fight. Tim had to really work for it and he did so very, very well. On one of Tim's first ventures out on his own, patrolling without Batman, he came across the Joker, who was initially infuriated at the sight of Robin, thinking he had failed to kill the Boy Wonder. But he soon realised it was just a replacement. So Joker swore to kill Tim, just as he had done to the previous Robin. But Tim was smarter and outwitted the Joker, defeating him and sending him back to Arkham. Around this time, Tim's father Jack awoke from his coma. He managed to convince him to buy a house close to the Wayne Manor so that Tim could secretly continue his work with Batman. Although Jack eventually became very resentful towards his son's relationship with Bruce Wayne and it was seen that he was constantly trying to avoid spending time with his father. 
Let's skip forward a bit. Tim was with Alfred and Jean-Paul Valley, aka Azrael, when Batman had his back broken by Bane. They acquired an ambulance and took Bruce back to the Batcave, despite Tim's initial protest that he should go to a hospital. He contacted Jim Gordon to get some medicine that Bruce needed. After that, there was nothing he could do but wait and pray alongside Alfred. Fortunately, Bruce of course survived, although he was psychologically a very different person. Tim could barely stand to see his mentor the way he was. But during Batman's absence, crime in Gotham began to rise and something had to be done about it. So Tim approached Bruce on the matter. Bruce turned down Tim's suggestion to have Dick take on the mantle of Batman temporarily, as he has his own responsibilities as Nightwing. This left the rather large responsibility to Azrael, so Tim gave him the Batsuit and taught him a few of Batman's tricks. When out on patrol with the new Batman, Tim noticed that Azrael was getting more and more aggressive when it came to taking on criminals. Before long, Bruce decided that he needed to come out of retirement and take back the Bat mantle. He was now healed both physically and mentally from his injuries. Before confronting Jean-Paul, he took up a crash course with Lady Shiva just to get back into the swing of things. Then after confronting Azrael and taking back the cowl, Batman and Robin were back. Now let's move forward to the return of Jason Todd, now going by Red Hood. Jason was bitter and angry that he had been replaced as Robin, so he broke into Titan's tower and confronted Tim. The two fought and Jason ultimately struck him down, demanding to know from Tim if he thought he was really as good as people say. Tim replied with a defiant yes before being knocked unconscious. Jason then tore the R emblem off of Tim's Robin suit, but he had actually developed a sort of respect for Tim after this moment. Jason wondered if he would have made a better Robin if he had the friends and family that Tim had growing up. Obviously guys, if you want to know more about Jason Todd's story or even Dick Grayson for that matter, I have full videos on them on the channel that you can check out. Now, after the Battle of the Cowl storyline, Dick Grayson had taken up the role of Batman during Bruce's absence. Although Dick considered Tim to be his equal and ally, he did not want him to be his sidekick, so he instead offered the role of Robin to Damian Wayne, Bruce's real son. Tim came to the belief that Bruce was still alive somewhere in the world. As such, he left Gotham behind to begin his search. But as he was no longer the Boy Wonder, he took on the mantle previously worn by Jason, the Red Robin. Tim began travelling around the world looking for Bruce. The rest of the Bat family were worried about him, thinking he was just struggling to adjust to life without his mentor. But he eventually found proof of Bruce's current existence, proving himself as a hero in his own right and not just a sidekick. In the new 52 revamp, Tim continued his work as Red Robin and then in the DC Rebirth soft reboot, Tim decided to operate under the new name Drake. Yeah great idea. However, in the absence of Damian Wayne, he returned to operate in as Robin. After breaking up with on and off again girlfriend and also Robin Stephanie Brown, Tim goes on a journey of self-discovery and actually comes out as bisexual where he started dating his old friend Bernard Dowd. You can continue to follow Tim's story in a bunch of the current DC titles if you're interested in knowing more of the current storyline for him. So that's that. So far we have covered three Robins in chronological order. Which one is your favourite? I've also had the debate on the channel already, casually discussing all of the Robins and attempting to rank them. You can check that video out if you're interested in my thoughts, but let me know in the comments, where does Tim Drake rank in your favourite Robins? That's it from me today my friends, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. I hope you have a great day and don't forget to return to the Batcave for more Bat content.